grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God of Elizabeth and Mary, you visited your servants with news of the world's redemption in the coming of the Savior. Make our hearts leap with joy and fill our mouths with songs of praise that we may announce glad tidings of peace and welcome the Christ in our midst. Amen. Amen. Let's be seated. I think the kids, we're gonna meet Pastor Peter by the wreath. Yeah, come on, let's I'll meet under you. our tiny wreath. The little one. Love Central, we have a very small wreath. Come on and kids, meet me under this, this circle here. This nice wreath. Hey, lovies. I know, look at that, that big circle up there. I think it's 16 feet across. Asher you can do the come. math, Asher's coming. So we have, one, we have one candle up there, one lantern lit. How many should be lit? How many? Two? We have a problem. We only have one lit. We need two lit. Do you guys know Mark Kiefer? Mark Kiefer is up there. Mark, can you wave? Can we see your hand stick up there? There's Mark. He's only a hand up there waving at us. Oh, there's a whole person. There's a whole Mark Kiefer. He has a control of the lights. Should we ask him, please, to turn on number two? So on the count of three, let's say, please, Mark, turn on number two. One, two, three. Please, Mark, can you turn on number two? Wait, wait, wait. I think Mark is playing with us, which is a good thing. Oh, there it is. It's blue. Let's give Mark a round of applause. Yay, Mark. You like that? So how many are lit now? How many are left? Two. So we're getting closer. When all four are lit, then we know it's time for Christmas. Very exciting. Thank you for helping me get that one lit, and thank you, Mark Kiefer, for getting it from the gold to the blue. All right, you can go back to mom or dad, grandma, grandpa. Yeah, I want those two to be lighted gold. You want those lighted gold? Blue, blue. Blue, blue, gold, gold? All right, well, you talk to Mark when he comes down, because he has the app on his phone. To do Asher, this. Asher which is, has the design notes though. Asher has the design notes, that's true. <laughs> A reading from Isaiah. Again the Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol, or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mortals, that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord God's self will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child, and shall bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel according to Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you, but she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, uh, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, the power of the Most High will overshadow you, therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, he will be called Son of God, and now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who is said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Here am I, servant of the Lord. Let it be, let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
Mary said yes. She had to say yes. It had to be consent. It had to be her yes. And the angel Gabriel must have been terrified. If you're a Philip Beekner fan from decades ago, his little collection has all these reflections on various biblical characters, peculiar treasures. And Beekner reflects on the angel Gabriel sent to Mary. And he lays it out that Mary, when he arrives, he, he realizes Mary is this young woman, a child almost herself. And he has been sent with this task to invite her response. But he knows that Mary has the choice to say, it's really not a good time for all of this. It's how it has to work in every relationship. There always has to be the mutuality, the possibility of our yes and the possibility of our no. Our own agency and boundaries have to be a part of our life. This is how God created us to be. And we can wonder, what was God thinking? <laughs> Wouldn't it have been easier if God had just made us all just immediately do God's will? That we all would have just had Cheerios for breakfast without any choice of Lucky Charms or Captain Crunch. But that's how it has to work. Relationships always have to have the mutuality, and that includes the relationship with God. And so the angel Gabriel arrives, and Beekner says the angel Gabriel is probably as terrified as Mary. The do not be afraid, Mary, is probably not for Mary. It's probably Gabriel like, do not be afraid, do not be afraid, do not be afraid. <laughs> And I love that Gabriel sort of over-explains everything because he's nervous. So the power from on God is going to come upon you, and you're going to have a child, you're going to call him the Son of God, he's going to be Jesus, he's going to be great. And Mary probably has that moment like, he is talking a lot. He's talking a lot. And then there's this pause, and Beekner says, you almost have a sense that Gabriel, with all of his glory, is hoping that Mary doesn't notice that he's trembling, waiting for Mary's consent. And Mary says, yes. Or, for those of you Beatles fans, you can have the earworm for the rest of the day. Mary says, let it be. Let it be. Speaking words of wisdom, let it be. In the hour of darkness, Mother Mary, come to me, whispering, let it be, into the complexity of it all, you see. Because Mary's yes is not a yes that is a yes of the certainty of faith. Mary's yes, here's something to ponder all week, Mary's yes is a yes to the mystery of our lives and the mystery of faith. There are moments that we have the certainty, the glimpses of time when we have that great sense of God's abiding grace and we have a strong yes. And we often were raised in the life of faith that that's what faith is. Faith is always the power and the certainty of our faith, which in the times of the long nights, the dark nights of the soul, there is a gift that comes of that certainty. But I don't know about you, most of the time for me, I'll just speak for myself, it is not the certainty. <laughs> It's the yes in the face of the mystery, the mystery of God's love and grace. Debbie Thomas, who is an essayist that Pastor Melissa, Pastor Steph, and I just love, we talk about her writing all the time. She writes when that, in a couple years ago, in an essay that she wrote, she says, notice the cadence. The angel Gabriel comes, lays out the case. Mary asks questions. Mary's not moving from a faith and a certainty to a yes. Mary is moving into the mystery and to say yes. Or what Debbie Thomas says, she moves into holy bewilderment. I won't ask for a show of hands, but are there occasional moments in your life where you feel pretty bewildered? Bewildered about your own self? You ever have those moments where you look in the mirror and you're, you are like, you are the most bewildering person that I've ever seen. Kathy would say that about me often. <laughs> you are very bewildering to me. 
or in the world or our relationships or the context of our lives. We wish it was certain and scripted and all worked out, but it's, it's much more a journey into the bewildering reality of our lives and into the holy bewilderment of God. Christian Wyman, who's a stunning essayist today, brilliant mind, who is in the midst of a terminal cancer, in his collection of essays, My Bright Abyss, names this, that the journey of our lives is not necessarily the journey into certainty, but a journey into the mystery deepening. The faith that you had at 15 is not the faith you have now at 25 or 45 or 75 or 95. You are continually in the process of becoming And God is continually at work in your life. God is not present for you because of the certainty. God is the presence in the mystery, continually engaging your yes in the face of life's ambiguities and bewildering experiences, which is a good thing because we don't want to hang on to the faith that we had when we were 15. We want it to continue to bloom and blossom and take on the nuances and the possibilities of how it expands. If you like Anne Lamott, which we love, we're we're big Anne Lamott fans as well. Why? Anne Lamott writes all the time, you've probably seen this quote, that God 101, as she says, the very first class on God, God 101 is always that God is a mystery. (laughs) And God's mystery is a mystery of unconditional love and grace and mercy. And then Anne says, and I hate that. (laughs) She said, it drives me crazy that a life of faith is about embracing the mystery, but she said, but what a wonder that is, the mystery of God's love in your life and mine. The angel Gabriel comes, lays out the whole particularity for Mary, and then she asks the very pointed question, do you know how this pregnancy works there, Gabe? She has this conversation and she is perplexed and she ponders. It's almost a little foreshadowing of Christmas Eve when we're back and we hear that the shepherds come in and tell Mary all about it and Mary ponders all this in her heart. And the shepherds return rejoicing and praising God for all that they have seen and they've heard. What a stunning thought that Mary says yes to the mystery of God. And what does that mean when we think about Mary raising Jesus? The lessons that Mary teaches Jesus about all of the ways that we we continually learn to say yes to the mystery of who we are, the mystery of our relationships, the mystery in the world, the mystery of unconditional love, the mystery of grace and mercy. I mean, Jesus embodies mystery, is mystery, as he engages the mystery of the people on the margins, the last, the lost, the least and the little, as Capon used to say in his writings, that Jesus is not afraid of the mystery of those who the culture would say are disenfranchised or should be on the outside. Jesus is fully aware of the yes and brings his yes into the margins, into the mystery of every human being experienced to the least lost, the leper, the lame, the woman at the well, the disenfranchised, continually the unconditional love that we can wonder, did he learn from his mother about how to say yes to the mystery? And it's not certainty when he's in the garden. Jesus says, well, if this cup would pass, that would be great. And on the cross in Mark's gospel says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That sounds like a lot of mystery. And yet Jesus continually says, yes, trusting in God, dying on the cross, being raised on Easter Sunday for you and for me so that we now are the people who have the glimpses and moments of certainty, no doubt, but just as much the naming and affirmation that the holy bewilderment that you and I experience is still filled with the presence of God and God's grace, of a God who continues to come and meet you so that we might say yes to the mystery of life itself. What a strange invitation that Mary teaches us today. In our hours of darkness, Mother Mary, come to me. Speaking words, whispering, John and Paul wrote, whispering words of wisdom, let it be.
Let it be. If you need a secular reference, in the Santa Claus, when Tim Allen is struggling with the possibility that he is Santa, what does Judy the Elf tell him? Seeing is not believing. Believing is seeing. The certainty is not what's going on here. It's the uncertainty that makes so much more possible beyond what we know and understand. And if you want to bring it back into good orthodoxy, just think about Hebrews 11, that the greatest assurance of our hope is a faith in what we cannot see, but we know is going on. That this Jesus died and was raised for you and for me, the embodiment of all this mystery, And Mary shows us the way to say yes to the mystery of our lives, our relationships, and the world. May all of our lives be filled with the possibility of yes to the mystery of God's unconditional love, the mystery of your own journey, the mystery of your relationships, the holy, bewildering reality of our lives on the planet, and still God's relentless presence in your life and mine. May we be inspired by Mary and that all our lives are filled with the yes to the mystery, the ways that we are called to sing. Let it be. Let it be.
prepare for Emmanuel, God with us, let us pray for all people and places that long for God's presence. God of the cosmos, you sing creation into existence. Lead us away from habits that harm what you have made and guide us in practices that preserve and restore creatures and habitats. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the Magnificat, your reign extends over all principalities and powers. Teach the nations your ways. Strengthen organizations and communities that they may broker peace and care for refugees, immigrants, and all caught in the center of conflict. Lord, in your mercy, God of change, restore your people who are in need. Help all who are suffering. And today we lift up Marie, Mary, Karen, Grace, and Max. Provide comfort and strength and nurture sustained wholeness for the future. Lord, in your mercy, God of memory, we remember those who have died and rest in you. Guide us in deep gratitude for their life and allow us to learn from their faithful witness. And we remember those who grieve and you, we ask you to draw near to them. And today we remember Sarah and Lily Gunch who remember Sarah's sister Faith. Lord, in your mercy, Creator of the stars of night, your people's everlasting light, O Christ, Redeemer of us all, we pray you hear us when we call in your holy name. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please take this time to share that peace with one another.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy God, you sing the creation continually into existence. We give you thanks for the stars at night, the morning sunrise, the change of seasons, and that you abide with us in all moments of life. Holy God, your servant Mary said yes and joined your song of creation. We give you thanks for her vision of faith and transformation. Holy God, your son born of Mary joined your song of healing, welcome, justice, and renewal for all creation. We give you thanks for his life, death, and the new life of Jesus Christ, Savior, Son, and Song. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and he gave thanks, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, and he gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Send your spirit upon us, that our souls might magnify you. Our spirits rejoice in your presence, and our lives reflect your way of humility. May this meal strengthen and inspire us to care for those on the margins the least, last, lost, and little. To you, Holy One, be all honor and praise, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven. Jesus' yes to us is in this meal, so you are all welcome and all invited to it. Why don't you have a seat for a few announcements? Uh, the first of which is if you picked up a communion cup on the way in, or if you've gathered elements at home, this is the body of Christ broken and shed for you. Body and blood of Christ broken and shed for you. For the rest of us in the room, we'll come forward at the usher's invitation. There are gluten-free wafers, there's regular wafers, there's juice, and there's wine. So please just let your servers know what you need. And please know that this is an open table. Everyone is welcome.
Let us pray. God of joy and exaltation, may this meal now strengthen what is weak, heal what is broken, and give hope to those who live in fear. Look upon our needs this day, inspire our gratitude, and keep us faithful in your service until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives forever and ever. And for being in worship today. Thank you for being here, both you're here in the room and for those of you who are worshiping online via the live stream. It's just good to be together. Uh, in case you didn't know, we hosted a few thousand of our friends this weekend. Some of you were here for that. And so it was Advent Vespers weekend with Augsburg University, and it was fantastic. And we just want to thank all of you and all of the staff and all of our, you know, everyone who made it happen. Uh, we had tons of great volunteers, and thanks to those who run the volunteers, and thanks to Mark and for all the goodness. We're just grateful. We also have some other things coming up. So that's why we still have all the staging in. <laughs> if you didn't hear, there's a very fancy choir coming. <laughs> I say that because I'm not the person who knows these things. Okay, so Consparare is coming, and they will be with us on Wednesday. And if you don't have tickets yet, you can go to their website and buy tickets. So it was noted by the Star Tribune as the must-do holiday concert of the season. We are very fancy and very excited. So we also have Bible study that night and Pastor Stephanie and I are working through the Mary and Elizabeth stories. Uh, we will have Bible study on Zoom. So if you'd like to Zoom the Bible study, we have a few in-person spots for those of you who want to do both, the Bible study and the concert. I believe in you, I know we can do it. So a <laughs> couple things this week coming up. And then I think that's enough announcements today. We've got lunch, you're welcome to stay. It's gonna be a good day. Thanks for being in worship. So receive the blessing. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
Now go in peace to sing your song of faith. <laughs>